My next guest is getting ready to fight at Bellator 278 in Hawaii. Danny Sabatello, who f- will face Jornel Lugo in a wild card bout in the Bellator Bantamweight World Grand Prix. Danny, how's it going, man? Doing great, bro. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks again for the time uh, to start things off here. Uh, what's the vibe been like in the gym ahead of this one? And uh, how excited are you? Yeah, you know, the vibes are really high right now. Um, initially, I wasn't going to be in the tournament. Um, I was left out of the tournament, even though I felt like I deserved it the entire time. But uh, now that I do have the opportunity to uh, be the Bellator champion, I guess the mood is just really high just because, you know, we weren't sure that this opportunity was going to come. Um, I kind of had a feeling that somebody was going to duck out of the tournament, maybe one or two guys. So we were kind of hoping I was going to be one of the alternates. And it was just a dream come true finding out that I am one of the alternates. And, and that was just go time. Yeah, definitely. And uh, as you mentioned there, you were originally weren't selected, but obviously we had Sergio Pettis and uh, James Gallagher pull out. Um, does this give you any extra motivation to put on a great performance now that you have this opportunity? I mean, I'm always a motivated guy, no matter what the fight is. It doesn't matter if it was going to be in the Grand Prix tournament or just a fight on the street. It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, just it, it, I guess it does give a little bit more juice just because, you know what, each one of these fights is going to be my way to a title. Um, and that's really why I fight. You know, I'm fighting to win uh, the Bellator Bantamweight Championship and be the best on earth. So it, I guess it, it does give me a little bit more juice. But no matter what, I'm just a very energetic, motivated guy as it is. And, and I, there's really not much more to it. Definitely. And uh, what did you first find out about this opportunity? Yeah, so I got a call from my manager last week, uh, early last week, and he was notifying me that I was going to be able to fight Jornal Lugo um, in Hawaii. So I was already fucking pumped for it. You know, what What a great opportunity. And in fact, I've been calling out Jornal Lugo for a while now. I think it's a great matchup for me. I think he sucks, and I just beat the shit out of him. Um, and then a couple of days later, he called me and said, hey, this fight is going to be to get into that Grand Prix tournament. So you know, I was already so pumped to go to Hawaii and beat the shit out of this clown and, and to have it in the Grand Prix. Now it's just even better. So I found out maybe last week, two weeks ago. Um, I don't even know. It doesn't really matter to me. I've been in training camp for, for forever. You know, I don't really have training camps. I'm always training twice a day, every day, the best gym in the world at American Top Team. So, you know, I don't even know exactly when I did find out. You know, I've been training for this since I got down here to South Florida. So I think it was last week. Maybe it was two weeks ago. I don't even fucking know. Yeah, I got you. And do you guys have any history? Because I remember he mentioned in an interview that he didn't know who you were. And then obviously that prompted a response out of you. But have you guys uh, ran across paths at all in South Florida? I've never seen him live in the flesh, but I know he definitely knows who I am. Mm. Um, I've been calling him out for forever. And he's even talked about me calling him out before. So for him to just say that, he doesn't know who I am. He's just a moron. You know, he's lying. He obviously doesn't want to fight me before this. He didn't have to fight me. You know, he kind of pick and chose his fight. You know, I've been calling him out. I was calling out a bunch of guys. Um, and then when interviewers, you know, finally asked him, Hey, are you going to fight Danny Sabatello? He's been talking shit about you. He acted like he didn't know who I was, but I mean, that's all good. Now he has to fight me. Now it's in the grand prix tournament. It's to become the champion. He's going to take it no matter what. So I know that in his mind, he already knows that I'm better than him. He already knows that I'm the better fighter and that I'm going to beat the shit out of him. So I know he's going to bank for some flashy finish. I know he's going to think, you know what? This guy's better than me. It is what it is. I'm going to have to go for broke and try for a crazy knockout or a crazy submission. So that's kind of how I see the fight laying out. You know, I think I'm going to go in there and I'm going to break his face. I'm going to dominate him. I'm going to cut him open and make him bleed. There's going to be blood all over the canvas, hopefully. And then he's going to get a little desperate. He's going to try to do some crazy stuff. And I'm just too technical, too good. I have too many skills um, to not let that happen. And that's just how it's going to go. I'm going to finish him in the second or third round. Yeah, and I was about to ask about that because this fight's going to be three rounds instead of five. I think all other Grand Prix uh, fights are going to be five rounds after this one. But um, does that give you any extra incentive to get a finish as opposed to uh, leaving it into the judges' hands? Yeah, I just wish it was five rounds just because that's more my style of fighting. I got really good conditioning. Um, I don't think anybody in, you know, an MMA across weight classes has as good as conditioning as me. Um, I'll always be able to go. So five rounds will always suit me. But just, uh, you know, now that I have three, it doesn't really matter. I think I finish him in the first round if I really want to. But I don't necessarily want to do that. 
Um, I kind of want to make this guy feel pain and suffer. He's been talking a little bit of trash too. So I don't want to give him the easy way out and just knock him out real quick or submit him real quick. Plus, you know, sometimes when these quick finishes, these guys can say, Oh, it was just a fluke. You know, he just, you know, quickly slipped something in or, you know, my hands were out of position briefly. The way I fight is I just dominate motherfuckers and I just leave no doubt that I'm the better fighter. Um, the way I go about it is every, I win every position. I win every second of every round. And that's kind of how I see this fight playing out. I see the first round me straight dominating him, him even wanting a way out, getting him a little bit of tired, getting him a little broken, mentally breaking his spirits. And then second or third round, I know everyone wants to see a finish. So that's when that finish will come, but it's not going to go. And I'm not going to chase for it until I feel that he's had some suffering. I got you. And uh, who's going to be in your corner for this fight? Yeah, it's going to be one of my uh, main training partners in college wrestling. I uh, wrestled at Purdue. It's going to be Aaron Acid. Hmm. Um, he's around my weight, and he's around the same height as uh, Jornel Lugo. So he's going to be there. I've been working with him a little bit. Um, his specialty is also um, cutting weight, so he's going to help with that. And then also my head coach, Mike Brown. Um, he's always going to be in my corner. Uh, he's my head coach. He's the best coach in the game of MMA. You know, it's just – that's just how it is. If you don't think it, then you're wrong. Um, so as long as I have Mike Brown in my corner, I don't really care. But, yeah, it's going to be those two. And then you're uh, coming off of a big win over uh, Brett Johns at Bellator 259, uh, arguably the biggest win of your career to this point. Uh, reflecting on that performance, how would you evaluate it? Yeah, I thought it was really good. You know, that guy, Brett Johns, is just an absolute stud. He was ranked, I believe, top 10 in the UFC. His only losses are to Aljamain Sterling and Pedro Munoz. Mm. I mean, in addition to that, I got the call on five days notice to fight him. So I think with, you know, all things considered, I'm very happy about that. I'm very satisfied with my performance. Um, I know, obviously, you want to finish in every fight you want to finish. But, man, this is a tough game. And anytime you can get a win in an MMA fight, you take it. And, and I'm happy. And I'm not going to let these dumbass fans get me down when they say, Oh, I didn't finish the guy or whatever. So, you know, if the expectation for me is to finish a guy like Brett Johns on five days notice, then I'd say the expectation is pretty high and I'll take it. Um, but you know what, maybe if I had six days notice, maybe I would have finished him, but you know, I'm very happy about it. I'm thrilled. I know it was almost a year ago, but I'm still feeding off that momentum. Um, that just kind of shows that, you know, Danny Sabatello is here to stay. If I can dominate a guy like Brett Johns, man, just look what I can do. Um, and that's why I'm just so fucking excited to get back in the cage and dominate motherfuckers again, just to remind people, dude, I am the best bantamweight on the planet. And I think it starts April 22nd in Hawaii. Absolutely. And uh, a teammate of yours at American top team, uh, Johnny Evelyn, it was just announced that he's going to get a middleweight title shot against uh, gay guard Musasi. How do you see that playing out? Yeah, of course, I see my boy Johnny winning and uh, sealing that victory. I think that's going to be an absolutely massive win, not just for him, but for American top team. Um, Musasi is just an absolute stud. Um, and if Johnny can take him down, then then that's just that's that's awesome. You know, maybe Gager could be the best in his weight division right now. You know, you never know. Um, so, I, of course, I'm a little bit biased, but I see Johnny winning that fight. And the good thing is that's announced for June 24th in Connecticut. And if I beat Jornell and when I beat Jornell April 22nd, then I'll be fighting Higo on that same card. So I'm pumped about that. But obviously, first things first, I got to beat the shit out of Lugo April 22nd. Um, but if I were to look ahead a little bit, I would be on the same card as Johnny. And, and that's going to be a special night. Yeah, I got you, man. And uh, what does a typical fight week look like for you? What do you like to uh, do to de-stress with your team and uh, get ready for the fight? Yeah, I pretty much just chill and worry about the weight cut. I mean, at, at that point, all the work is in. Nothing you're going to do really is going to determine the outcome of the fight. You know, my whether I won or lost this fight has already been determined in the gym. And I, and I train with the best individuals there are. I have the best coaches there are. And I train twice a day every day. So I'm going to win this fight. You know, there, there, there's nothing that's going to happen that's going to have me lose this fight. Um, so just fight week, I just kind of stay calm. You know, it's it's a problem because I'm a little bit of an energetic, motivated guy. So I'll sometimes catch myself shadow boxing, you know, a few days before the fight where it's just like, dude, Sabatel, calm the fuck down. Like you're not fighting for a few days. So I try to keep myself calm, but it, you know, it's just tough. You know, I, I'm always visualizing the fight, you know, how it's going to play out. You know, fighting is my whole life. That's all I really give a shit about. I don't really do anything else. I don't really have hobbies. Hobbies are for average people. I, I'm not average. I don't do that stuff. All I do is fight and I think about fighting. So I just calm myself down. I relax myself. 
I remind myself, you know what? The fight is Friday. I can't win it right here in this hotel room, shadow boxing. So why the fuck am I doing that? Just calm down, worry about the weight cut, cut the weight, do it right, and just go have fun when it's fight day. I got you, man. And uh, last question for me, uh, what can fans expect from the fight? And uh, what's the key to gain the win? Yeah, fans can expect a lot of bad blood. Me and this guy don't really like each other. Um, we're going to try to punish each other, and, and that's always going to make it more fun. I think it's going to be very violent. There's going to be blood. There's going to be a lot of hitting to the face and head. Um, you know, my goal isn't just to win this fight. It's to make him suffer and punish him. Uh, to tell you the truth, I want to rearrange his facial structure. I, I just don't like the guy, and I, and I want to beat the shit out of him. And the key to the victory is just being Danny Sabatello. I'm already so much better than this guy. So if I just go out there and just do what I do, I'm going to absolutely maul him and it's going to be a great night. Awesome, man. Well, uh, before we wrap things up here, I'll give you the floor to uh, shout out your, any sponsors you have, shout out your team, all that good stuff. I'll give you the final word. Yeah. My Instagram is shock this world. So follow me there and uh, join out Lugo. You're absolutely fucked April 22nd in Hawaii. Awesome, man. Well, Danny, thanks again for the time. It was great meeting you and uh, I'm sure we'll chat again soon. Thank you so much, man. Thank you.